close your eyes, take a couple of good long deep in and out breaths. Notice where you feel the breathing in the body. Focus your attention there. Then stay with the breath all the way in, all the way out. Think of the whole body breathing in, the whole body breathing out. And you're bathed by the breath all around you. Today we commemorate the eighth anniversary of the passing of the past king, Rama the Ninth. He was one of those rare kings who actually did have the welfare of his subjects in, in mind, in his heart, and devoted his life to helping the country as much as he could. And he helped not only Thailand, but also the rest of the world in the sense that in protecting Thailand, allowed Buddhism to flourish at a time when it was disappearing in countries all around it. People from abroad could come, study Buddhist teachings, study the Dharma, and then come back to their home countries. So the fact that we have a place like Wat Meta right here right now was a lot to him. So it's good to reflect on what we owe to him. And just in the same way as the Buddha said, the best way to pay homage to the Buddha was, would be to practice the Dharma in accordance with the Dharma. It's good to think about the Dharma that Rama the Ninth taught to his people, because he borrowed the Dharma from the Buddha as well. There was one event in 1983 when they were celebrating the 200th anniversary of Bangkok that he gave essentially what was the Dharma talk to the Thai nation. He taught a list of four qualities that the Buddha said are ideal for lay people to develop in their hearts if they want to develop, if they want to progress in happiness, progress in the Dharma. The list starts with truth. When you make up your mind you're going to do something good, you stick with it. You stay true to your original intentions. You don't let yourself get deflected by other things. That means when you see that something you'd like to do will give long-term harm, you tell yourself not to do it. Something you don't like to do but would give long-term benefit, you talk yourself into wanting to do it. That way you stay true to your original intention that you want long-term welfare and happiness. The second quality is self-control. As you practice, greed, aversion, and delusion are going to come up. And even though you can't yet get rid of them, you can keep them inside the house. In other words, don't let them go out wandering around the neighborhood, bothering other people. When anger comes up, you don't have to act on the anger. This is one of the reasons why we practice breath meditation, is there's going to be a lot of tension that comes up when anger arises in the heart. And oftentimes we feel we've got to get it out of our system. All we have to get out of our system is just bad energy. So breathe in a way that dissolves the bad energy. Now we have, it makes it a lot easier to control your, your actions, your words, even though defilements are in your heart. You don't have to act on them. The third quality is endurance. The path to happiness is going to take a long time. It's going to take a lot of effort. So you put your heart into doing it and learn how not to weigh yourself down unnecessarily. This is one of the ways of helping you endure difficult things. And you look around and see what are you doing that's adding to the difficulty. Well, you can stop that. It makes it a lot easier to put up with difficulties and to endure them. And endure them doesn't mean just sit there patiently waiting for things to go away. Sometimes it means there's a task you have to do and it's going to take time. You learn how to keep your mind happy to do the task. They tell the story of an Englishman in the 1820s who gave himself over to a group of Dene in the Canadian wilderness. He wanted to go across the frozen wilderness there. And he had no other guides with them. So it was an unusual move at the time. He trusted his life to them. And he noticed that on the days when they were hunting and they didn't get anything, those were the days when they were most lighthearted. They would choke with one another as a way of making the, the difficulties easier. So the trick to endurance is learning how to make the difficulties easy for yourself. Don't add on any unnecessary burdens. The final quality is generosity. So many people think that whoever dies with the most toys wins. Well, whoever dies with the most toys still dies and can't take the toys with them. However, what you give away, that becomes part of your inner perfection of generosity. The Buddha gave the example. He said when the house is on fire, the things that are taken out of the house are the things that will survive. While your body is on fire, the gifts that you give, not only the material gifts, but the gifts you give of your time, your effort, your energy, your knowledge, those are the things that will be yours. Those survive the fire. So think of these four qualities, truth, self-control, endurance, and generosity. And think of the good people in the past who have practiced them and have encouraged us to practice them as well. That's why goodness lives on in the world. We see people dying all the time. Good people die, bad people die. When good people die, 
it's possible that goodness could die with them, unless other people see the goodness and appreciate it and put it into their own actions. That's how goodness survives in this world.